rolling. Hey folks, Sega Sonic fan here, and today I'm with my friend. We're going to S-Video mod his 32X, and I thought I'd make a little video just kind of going a little more in-depth, because a lot of the videos, so far everything I've seen out there, explains how to do the mod. It doesn't explain why you're doing the mod, and which in turn gives you more options for quality differences and stuff like that. So this is a guide, it's a really good one actually, from RetroTimeGames.com, which shows you, you know, generally where the video encoder is. This is the Chroma encoder. It tells you to remove R45, tells you where the two lines are, tells you where power is, and it gives you a very simple amplification circuit. Um, and that's about it. Just kind of says, put this transistor here. I wouldn't really recommend mounting a, mounting a transistor that way either, but whatever. It's also the world's largest resistor. No, it's just a typical one fourth. But um, this is all very like par for the course what you get with a lot of guides right now. And what I want to do is just talk very briefly about a better way to do a modification um, in, a, in a more professional way. And that is to understand what you're doing. And so in order to do that, I looked at this part number. It says Sega 3155788. I know it's a video encoder because it's taking RGB and putting out Chroma and Luma. Chroma and Luma do not come out natively from any Sega video processor. So I went to type up in an internet search that same model number and came up with this on console five. And if I, 3155788. Well, it turns out this is a ROM chip, ROHM is the company, and it's actually a BA7237FS. Now, when I looked that up, I couldn't come up with anything. And, you know, it's probably because it's a, however 20 plus years old chip and information just isn't online however there is this uh diagram most likely from the sega service manual that gives us a nice internal block diagram is what it's called explaining the functions of the chip and so you can understand in more detail exactly what we're doing and i thought i'd give a quick rundown of this so here we have rgb r1 r2 g1 g2 b1 b2 that means we have two RGB inputs, RGB1 and RGB2. Why would there be two? Well, one's probably coming from the Genesis and one's coming from the 32X, the SH2 or SH1 processors and all that. And so it has to switch between those, those video inputs depending on which kind of cartridge you put in. Makes sense, right? So what you have is you have some basic clamps for the incoming signals. And then you have here this nice diagram of an actual switch. And that switch with this YS with an arrow pointing right there means that that's controlled from the YS pin. So that's your logic pin. That's connected to the logic gate that tells it, okay, switch to this RGB signal, no switch to this one. So after that, it goes to this matrix here, and then you see these three triangles. Well, those are amplifying. Those are amplifiers, you know, op amp symbols. Um, or I guess they could be inverters, depending on how, what, what kind of information they're running off of for the block diagram. But most likely these, these are actually meant to be amplifiers. And so the reason why is you have your, your outputs here your R out, your B out, I guess G out is, I don't see it. It's got to be here somewhere. Are you sure it's not just supposed to be G and they wrote C by accident? Very possible. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, because I think in the other data sheet I saw it says G. <laughs> yeah, because this is C out, This is this is V, which is V out. So C out usually means composite video, but that's actually usually labeled just V out for video output. So yeah, I think you're right. These are actually RGB. Um, and so how is it making composite video? Well, there's a bunch of stuff that happens. You have um, this VCXO, which has to do with the input signals from the crystal oscillator and a phase generation circuit. And then you have your chroma generation, which is your color generation. And then you have your sync, your synchronization mixing circuit. And this stuff can get really complicated. I'm not an expert on all those different stages and how they work, but you get the general gist of it. Um, and so what happens is, you, your chroma generator here, yeah, here's actually C out, so that's definitely G out. So this actually creates a color output, chrominance. That's only color. That's it, just color information. And then here, your sync mix creates a Y out, which is your Luma, your black and white synchronized image. That's it, just black and white. When you put those two together, you get your V out, your composite video, because composite video is composed of chrominance and luminance. And it says right here, YC mix. Well, the YC mix is coming from pin 21 and it's coming from pin 19. So what does that mean? That means that externally outside of the chip, 
C out goes through some components and comes back in through C in and gets mixed. Same with Y out. It goes out some components, comes back in through Y in and gets mixed. So go back to our guide here. What are they telling you to do? They're telling you to remove the component for the Y out so that that signal is only going to your S video and isn't mixing back into the circuit, creating, um, creating your composite video. You probably need to do that because if it's not amplified well enough, it won't supply enough, um, enough gain for the two signals. From what I read, it makes it look very blurry. That would also make sense because it's, it's interfering with, it's basically having a, it still has a connection with the chip itself, um, with the, with the chrome and it's producing signal. So, uh, yeah, so that gives us an idea of what we're actually doing. The benefit of that, other than just like having some cool knowledge, is it actually helps us design a mod that's gonna be um, really cool and really uh, really work well and do exactly what we want. And so if you wanna make a switch for that, there's ways you can do it. You can use a flip-flop circuit, you could even use an Arduino um, with, with a multiplexer, with like a low uh, resistance multiplexer. And we're not gonna do all that because we don't really care about composite. Though I am curious, um, you know, there are some things available, but some options. But um, I also designed a board here, which I'm just going to show off real quick, um, which I haven't put up for sale yet, but I will really soon. And this is a, if you can even see it, nice tiny little board. This is for a uh, Sega Genesis and Master System and a lot of older late 80s, 90s systems to amplify an S-video signal. And if I show the other side here, there's my uh, Sega Sonic Fan Designs. And it's designed for the CXA1145 because that's an older chip that does this exact same thing. It mixes externally the composite and lumin the, the chrominance and the luminance to create composite. So you split those signals and you install this board and then you have a nice even amplified output. Um, if I actually go to, I'll just show you actually really quick what the results look like, because I actually have them online. I have a Flickr account. If you just search Flickr and Sega Sonic Fan, Sega Sonic Fan Designs, that is my website, segasonicfan.wixsite.com slash retro, if you want to go to the actual website. But here I posted some images for a customer on the S video upgrade board when I installed this in his master system. And that's what you get with composite. And you can see everything's kind of blurry, especially the shine within Opa Opa's um, you know, windshield or whatever, visor. And here in the S video, it's nice and crisp. You know, it's a lot more crisp. If it was RGB, it would be perfect. But as it says video, you get you can actually see the clarity, especially the yellow, uh, the vertical yellow stripe. And you can make out more and more that it's Opa Opa. Um, if I zoom these in, this will also show you, I guess I could click on it, see if the screen's big enough to show it. But there is a noticeable difference here as well. If I zoom in over here, you'll see that in composite, you get this rainbow banding artifacting stuff, where you got this kind of rainbow tinge around the side of the boss here. And things are just generally more blurry, especially these dots, kind of freckle looking dots on his face. If you go over here, you can see the face is a lot more clear, everything's a lot more crisp, and then you don't have that nasty rainbow banding around the edge. And of course, in practice, when you're playing it, this stuff can be sometimes more obvious, sometimes less obvious. If you have like a, a detailed, um, like, like hashy kind of pattern in the background, this rainbow banding can really play hell on, on the image and look really nasty. If you want a really easy place to check, Sonic 1, walk in front of a waterfall. Green Hill Zone. Yes. Looks like an ass. <laughs> that is the classic way to check. And so, um, yeah, I can show you uh, the uh, the board install that... Uh, do I have a picture of it? I did. Go away. Yeah, here's the install. So here's the install I did for this customer's master system. And there's my board right there. And it's nice... Easy, straightforward installation. You see the three wires, composite, luminance, and uh, one of them's power, some ground. 
and then you get your nice plug, which you can unplug from the case. The nice thing about this plug is that um, if you want to open up your 32X again or your system, whatever it is, you're not having to have these wires that are that could be pulled out and ripped out of solder joints, and you can just simply unplug it, take the shell, put it aside. It's a nice thing to have. So that's all I'm going to talk about for now. I just wanted to make this short video to explain that there's ways to do things other than just following a walkthrough step by step, but there's some advantages to actually understanding how a circuit works, and then you can cater it precisely to what you want to build and how you want to build it. I uh, hope this was educational for y'all, and uh, that's pretty much all there is. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.